Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Steph and in this video we're going to be doing a bookshelf organization tour. We just moved into our new house and so we have just kind of thrown all of our books onto the shelf like this is the general region that they belong in. Um, but we haven't done, I mean as its parent, any kind of organizing whatsoever. You can probably tell just by looking at it that this is my husband's shelf this is my shelf. I'm going to organize both of them, but I'm probably really only going to show a lot and talk about my books because that's what I know about. I have a degree in museum studies and curation, which I have never really in my life used except for when I'm looking at how to take care of my own books. I did learn a few things that are really important uh, for me living in a really high humidity place. This, this climate is actually really hard on books and I've even noticed a lot of like really quick aging on some of the books that I already have that I only got like two years ago. We have some like foxing already developing on the pages. Oh, it's actually getting really bad. I don't know how well you can see like the yellow but it's really common in places that have uh, like relative humidity of over 75%. Today, I think we're close to 85%. It's sweaty all the time and even the books are suffering. <laughs> Our way of reducing the frequency of that happening is keeping it in this area. We have a window here and right behind you, we have a door that we often keep open. So we have kind of a nice cross breeze. Generally, uh, we do have air con in this room as well. I'm gonna get started by just taking everything off of the shelves and then we'll begin putting everything back and kind of figure out our plan then. <laughs> ever dusted the tops of your bookshelves. I think that was the first time for me and it was disgusting. So I've decided that I deserve a reward. Welcome to my kitchen! We are now just around the corner from the piles and piles of books. I'm gonna make myself a little gin and tonic in this very pretty glass that I got from Etsy. I'm the kind of person that likes to organize my shelves by genre and then by author like in a very librarian kind of way. <laughs> I'm very curious about this millennial rainbow shelf. I think I want to play with that a little bit and see if I can make it work for at least my shelf. I just feel like that might be a way to group things nicely and then I'm gonna try and mix it in with some decorative objects as well. days later because I am an adult with adult responsibilities. Alas, the tour continues. I will start by showing off my first shelf, my, my intellectual shelf, my like classics, trying to be dark academia, some of my favorites shelf. I feel like I'm just a floating head the way this is positioned, but Bear with me, we're gonna get some like kind of weird angles going on. Um, so here I have my Penguin Clothbound Classics. Most of my shelves are all organized by color, but I have these together and these together because duh, they look amazing. They are all Penguin except for, I've shown you this before, but my copy of Wuthering Heights. This one is Penguin as well, but it is like a different line of cloth bounds from Penguin. Turn of the Screw and Canterbury Tales are both kind of recent acquisitions of mine. I have not yet read Canterbury Tales. I had a dream where I read it and I loved it, and so now I'm gonna have to read it and find out if that dream was prophetic or if Chaucer gives me a headache. 
Of these, I'm also going to highlight my Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. I really do love this one. It Stoicism informs a lot of how I think about the world. So this is kind of a special nice little book. And I put it up here because I don't like our Grecian bust lady to be taller than the books. So that's how we solve that issue. Here I also do have the incomplete collection of Jane Austen children editions. I'll give you a little bit of a close-up, but I really love how these ones look. The pages are so smooth and lovely. They kind of remind me of a Bible. Um, Bible of Jane Austen. That's a Bible I would definitely read. Just here I have my little print that came with my pre-order of Hellbent. Okay. And then Anatomica. Again, I will insert a close-up here just to show you. Anatomica is a stunning history of both art and science. It documents the art of human anatomy and it brings deep joy to all sides of my personality. Okay, welcome to my yellow and blue shelf. Here I've got a collection of hobby books. I always had this dream that one day I might travel around Southeast Asia and sketch as I go, creating this romantic journal of all of the places I've been, but I haven't done it yet. And I do like to sew, but I am not at the couture level either. I also have some sciency books. I talked about the grieving brain in one of my more recent videos. Collective Trauma, Collective Healing is about how the arts and different kinds of community building techniques can foster resilience in other communities after like mass trauma. Yeah, this is a really interesting book actually because it is about Vienna at the turn of the century and all of the artistic things that are happening there like Klimt and the symbolist art movement, exploring things like the subconscious through art and doing things that were really kind of subversive, as well as the um, progressing science. We have like Freud, we have a lot of different interesting new research coming out of the Vienna School of Medicine. And it talks a little bit about how we perceive art as well um, and the sort of the relationship in between the development of art history and science. We also have a lovely signed book, Prior of the Orange Tree, Samantha Shannon. I met her recently. I'll link the vlog. We also have The Master and the Margarita. This is one of my favorite covers, I think, ever. I love it. I find it so beautiful and interesting and well suited to this book. I also have Give Out Creek. This one is based in my hometown, I believe. I haven't read it yet. My mom gave it to me for Christmas and I'm looking forward to reading it. If I swing us over here a little bit, here I have some frankincense from Oman. I have to get my face out of here. Um, in a little jar. Um, and yeah, and then I just put it in my little incense dish, which is hot because I was just burning it, and it melts in here. And then I also have this piece of art here. It's from an indigenous artist in Canada from Terrace, BC. Um, and here is from the Gitzan Nation, if I'm pronouncing that right. I lived pretty close to that area when I was young. Yeah, I just really like it. It reminds me of home. And now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hell Shelf. Here, you will find a collection of assorted undead, day trips to hell, and philosophy. That is a coincidence. Uh, first on the list, we have Paradise Lost. I got this one not too, too long ago. I have really enjoyed it. It's a lot more readable than I expected, if you don't know. It is a epic poem that kind of is about the struggle between God and Satan by Milton. I would also like to show off my copy of Hellbent. It is signed and addressed to me, which is one of the most exciting things of my life, I think. I did not meet Leigh Bardugo, and she has no idea who I am, but I like to imagine that there was a moment where she had to write my name with her actual hand, and in that moment I existed. It's a very vain fantasy. And then I also here have 
Pandemonium, which is another visual history, this time of demons and the demonic. I really love the art in this one. Um, I think it's just, it's very beautiful. I've always found sort of religious art and, and depictions especially of like the demonic and like what we fear in a given time of history. Very interesting. Um, and so this book kind of touches a little bit on some of that. Beyond Good and Evil by Nietzsche. Is that how you say it? Nietzsche? Mm -hmm. um, but I bought this one. I haven't read it yet. I want to very soon. And the reason that I got it without reading it is that I imagine myself annotating this book. Hell and Damnation is another favorite. I'm not quite finished, but it's basically a history and anthropology of hell, how and why we developed this idea of hell, and how the idea of hell has evolved over time. I have a free book, which I have not read, and I have two mouth books. These ones, I have not read this one actually, I'm looking forward to it quite a bit. It says, one day the mother was a mother, but then one night she was quite suddenly something else. I think she turns into a female dog, hence the title, and hopefully she eats somebody, I don't know. Um, and then a new animal. This book is bizarre. It is weird and I I think I really enjoyed it. <laughs> it is about a woman who does makeup for the dead, like for, for an open casket, that's her job, she does makeup, for a family funeral home. And then her mother dies, sends her into a total spiral of grief and, I don't know, she has a personal crisis. And she joins BDSM club, discovers herself, works her through her grief in that way. If you have ever watched this TV show from so, so long ago called Six Feet Under, about the very dysfunctional family who runs a funeral home, if you like that show and if you like that kind of story, that kind of drama, this is the book for you. Now here, I made a very nice transition between white and black books. This is Death, A Graveside Companion. Uh, this one is a bunch of macabre illustrations and fun facts, uh, essays about death. I saw this at my friend's house, I read it on the floor for like 20 minutes, and then I went home and bought it for myself. of the vampire, it almost made its way onto my favorite books, but I would say it's more like number 12. I think it's sort of a mashup of Interview with the Vampire plus some classic J. Kristoff sauce. It has a lot of illustrations just here. Don't you want to read that now? Very fun book. I have an extremely battered copy of Gideon the Ninth. Actually, it looks okay on the camera, I think, but it, it's pretty beat up. I took it to Bali, I read it in Bali, and it is now disgusting. But looking forward to the next one. 
And finally, of my highlights that I'll probably talk about is Slew Foot. I just got this one actually as well. Um, I have like a little haul, but I got this one partly because the artwork reminds me of Tony Dieter Lizzie's work, who illustrated the Spiderwick Chronicles, which is a story series that I loved when I was growing up. So, yeah. Uh, but this one, I believe, is about a witch in like early colonial days, like 1500s. And I think she makes a deal with the devil, but again, I haven't read it, I don't know. So that's that. Those are the shelves. I haven't shown my husband the shelf. I'll insert the clip here. But I'm pretty happy with how they came out. I think that the color blocking really worked pretty well. It gives it a very tidy, fairly neat look. Especially considering we don't have a whole lot of books to actually add to it. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and getting to see a few more of the books that are in my collection than I've talked about before. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! <music>